Hi there. So it's May 22nd, and we are on day 143 of our Through the Bible in One Year. They have us reading our, the last chapter of Samuel today, 2 Samuel, the last chapter, and a couple chapters in Chronicles, and then a psalm or so. So we'll get to that. Shall we turn on a background just for fix? There. That look better? No. So let's jump over there, and we'll get into it. David's military census. The Lord's anger burned against Israel again. <laughs> and he stirred up David against them to say, Go count the people of Israel and Judah. <clears throat> so the king said to Joab, the commander of his army, Go through all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba and register the troops so I can know their number. Joab replied to the king, May the Lord your God multiply the troops a hundred times more than they are, while my lord the king looks on. But why does my lord the king want to do this? Yet the king's order prevailed over Joab and the commanders of the army, so Joab and the commanders of the army left the king's presence to register the troops of Israel. <clears throat> they crossed the Jordan and camped in, yeah, that place, right. South of, the <laughs> south of the town in the middle of the valley, and then proceeded toward Gad and Jazer. They went to Gilead and to the land of the Hittites and continued on to Dan Jan and, <clears throat> and around to Sidon. They went to the fortress of Tyre and all the cities of the Hebites and Canaanites. Afterward, they went to the Negev and Judah at Beersheba. Well, they were busy, huh? <clears throat> when they had gone through the whole land, they returned to Jerusalem. At the end of nine months and twenty days, Joab gave king J gave the king the total number of the registration of the troops. There were eight hundred thousand valiant armed men from Israel and five hundred thousand from Judah. That's a lot, huh? David's conscience troubled him after he had taken a census of the troops. He said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. Now, Lord, because I have been very foolish, please take away your servant's guilt. David's punishment. <clears throat> when David got up in the morning, the word of the Lord had come to the prophet Gad, David's seer. Gad said to David, This is what the Lord says. I am offering you three choices. Choose one of them, and I will do it to you. Wow. So Gad went to David and told him the choices and asked him, Do you, do you want three years of famine to come to your land to flee from your foes, to flee from your foes three months while they pursue you or to have a plague in your land three days. Now consider carefully, what answer should I take back to the one who sent me? David answered, I have great anxiety. Please let us fall into the Lord's hands because his mercies are great, but don't let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel that morning until the appointed time from, from down to Beersheba. 70,000 men died. Wow. Then the angel extended his hand towards Jerusalem to destroy it, but the Lord relented concerning the destruction and said that the, to the angel <coughs> who was destroying the people, Enough, withdraw your hand now. The angel of the Lord was then at the threshing floor of Arun the Jebusite. When David saw the, saw the angel striking the people, he said to the Lord, Look, I am the one who has sinned. I am the one who has done the wrong. But these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand be against me and my father's family. David's altar. <clears throat> Gad came to David that day and said to him, Go up go up and set up an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of, of Arona the Jebusite. David went in obedience got to God's command, just as the Lord commanded. Aruna looked at, down and saw the king and his servants coming towards him, so he went out and paid homage to the king with his face to the ground. Aruna said, Why has my lord come, the king come to his servant? David replied, To buy the threshing floor from you in order to build an altar to the lord so the plague on the people may be halted. Aruna said to David, my, my lord the king may take whatever he wants and offer it. Here are the oxen for the burnt offering and the threshing sledges and oxes yokes for the wood. Your majesty, Aruna gives everything here to the king. Then he said to the king, May the lord your god accept you. The king answered Aruna, No, I insist on buying it from you for a price, for I will not offer the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for twenty ounces of silver. He, bought an he built an altar to the Lord and offered the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord was receptive to the prayer of the land, and the plague on Israel ended. 
Wow. A plate that took 70,000 people. Crazy, huh? And I think they just counted the men. They don't count the women and children. <clears throat> okay. Now, Chronicles is going to say the same thing. We're going to have to read it all over again. And I'm not sure why they had Chronicles and First Chronicles and Samuel practically say the same thing, almost word for word. So we'll read it all over again. <clears throat> Now this says Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to count the people of Israel. What does this say? Samuel says the Lord's anger burned against Israel and he stirred up David against them. That's a little contradiction there, huh? In Chronicles it says Satan. What is this A here? I knew you would do that. Or an adversary. Hmm. Now we got to find where we were. <clears throat> hmm. Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to count the people of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count Israel from Beersheba to Dan and bring a report to me so I can know their number. Deja vu, right? Joab replied, May the Lord multiply the number of his people a hundred times over. My Lord the king, aren't they all my Lord's servants? Why does the Lord want to do this? Why does my Lord want to do this? Why should he bring guilt on Israel? Yet the king's order prevailed over Job, so Job left and traveled throughout Israel and returned to Jerusalem. Job gave the total troop registration in David, and in all Israel there were hmm, 1,100,000 armed men, and in Judah itself 470,000 armed men. And it has different stories, huh? I don't know which one is right. It says 1,100,000, and up here it said... Eight hundred thousand from Israel, five hundred thousand from Judah. That's one point three. Down here, it's <coughs> one million. We got one million one hundred thousand and four hundred thousand. So it's, a, I guess, it turns out the same, huh? One million three hundred thousand. All right, where were we? And he did not include Levi and Benjamin in the count because the king's command was detestable to him. He didn't count everybody, huh? This command was also evil in God's sight, so he afflicted Israel. Hmm. That's interesting, huh? David said to God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. Now please take away your servant's guilt. I have been very foolish. The Lord instructed the Lord instructed Gad, David's here, go and say to David, this is what the Lord says. I am offering you three choices. Choose one of them for yourself, and I will do it to you. So Gad went to David and said to him, this is what the Lord says. Take your choice. Three years of famine or three months of devastation by your foes with the sword of your enemy overtaking you or three days or three days of the sword of the Lord, a plague on the land, the angel of the Lord bringing destruction to the whole territory of Israel. Yeah. Now decide what answer I should take back the one who I should take back to the one who sent me. David answered, "Gad, I am in anguish. Please let me fall into the Lord's hands, because His mercies are very great. But don't let them fall into human hands." So the Lord sent a plague on Israel, and 70,000 Israelite men died. Then God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it, but when the people, but when the angel was about to destroy the city, the Lord looked, relented concerning the destruction, and said to, to the angel who was destroying the temple, Enough, withdraw your hand now. The angel of the Lord was then standing at the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite, set a ruah up there. Huh. When David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven with his drawn sword and his hand stretched out over Jerusalem, David said to the elders covered in sackcloth, David and the elders covered in sackcloth fell face down. David said to God, Wasn't I the one who gave the order to count the people? I am the one who has sinned and acted very wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Lord my God, please let your hand be against me and against my father's family, but don't let that plague against you be against your people. David's altar. <clears throat> so
So the angel of the Lord ordered, ordered Gad to tell David to go and set up an altar on the Lord of the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. David went up at Gad's command, spoken in the name of the Lord. Ornan was, was threshing wheat when he turned and saw, saw the angel, his four sons, who were with him. When he saw the angel, his four sons who were with him hid. David came to Ornan, and when Ornan looked and saw David, he left the threshing floor and bowed to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Give me this threshing floor plot so that I may build an altar for the Lord on it. Give it to me for the full price so the plague of the people will be stopped. Ornan said to David, Take it, my lord, the king may do whatever he wants. See, I give the oxen for the rent offerings and the threshing pledges for the wood and the wheat for the grain offering. I give it all. David answered Ornan, No, I insist on paying the full price, for I will not take the Lord. Take for the Lord what belongs to you and offer it and burn offerings that cost me nothing. So David gave Ornan 15, 15 pounds of gold. It said 30 pounds of silver, but what's this? And let's jump to the bottom again. F. 600 shekels of gold by weight. See, now I'm lost. Why does it do that when you just want to look at a note? 15 pounds of gold for the plot. He built an offer to the Lord there and offered burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings. He called on the Lord and he answered them with a fire from heaven on the altar of burnt offering. The Lord spoke to the angel and he put his sword back in its sheath. At that time, David offered sacrifices there when he saw that the Lord answered him at the threshing floor of Onan the Jebusite. The tabernacle of the Lord which Moses made in the wilderness and the altar of burnt offerings were at the high place of, of Gibeon. <coughs> <coughs> David, <clears throat> but David could not go before it to inquire of God because he was terrified of the sword of the Lord's angel. <clears throat> and it's interesting that it's a different account, but you got to remember when witnesses tell accounts of things they saw, things will, it'll be different. Okay, it just will. Doesn't mean it didn't happen, but there's just different witnesses. Interesting, huh? Okay, chapter twenty-two. <clears throat> Then David said, This is the house of the Lord, and this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. <coughs> David's preparations for the temple. So David gave orders to gather the resident aliens that were in the land of Israel, and he appointed stone cutters to cut finished stones for building God's house. David supplied a great deal of iron to make the nails for the doors and the gates for the and for the fittings together with an immeasurable quality of bronze and innumerable and innumerable cedar logs because the Sidonians <coughs> and Tyrians had brought a large quantity of cedar logs to David. David said, My son Solomon is young and inexperienced, and the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceeding great and famous and glorious in all the lands. Therefore I will make provision for it. So David made lavish preparations before, for it before his death. <coughs> Then he, then he summoned his son Solomon and charged him to build the house for the Lord of God of Israel. My son, David said to Solomon, it was in my heart to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me. You have shed much blood and waged great wars. You are not to build a house for my name because you have shed so much blood on the ground before me. <clears throat> but a son will be born to you. He will be a man of rest. I will give him rest from all his surrounded, surrounding enemies. For his name will be Solomon, and I will give him peace and quiet to Israel during his reign. He is the one who will build a house for my name. He will be my son, and I will be his father. I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Yeah, Solomon is my favorite person in the in the in the entire Old Testament. You know, besides God Himself. But <clears throat> I always love Solomon. I study him a lot. Now, my son, may the Lord be with you, and, and and may you succeed in building the house of the Lord your God, as he said, as he said about you. Above all, may the Lord give you insight and understanding when he puts you in charge of Israel, so that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will succeed if you carefully follow the statutes and ordinances the Lord commanded Moses of Israel. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged. Notice I have taken great pains to provide for the house of the Lord. 3775 tons of gold, 37,750 tons of silver and bronze and iron that can't be weighed because there is so much of it. 
I have also provided timber and stone, but you, but you will need to add more to them. You also have many workers, stone cutters, masons, carpenters, and people skilled in every kind of work, in gold, silver, bronze, and iron, beyond number. Now begin the work, and may the Lord be with you. Then David ordered all the, <coughs> all the leaders of Israel to help his son Solomon. The Lord your God is with you, isn't he? And, he, and hasn't he given you rest on every side? For he has handed the land's inhabitants over to me, and the land has been subdued before the Lord and his people. Now determine in your mind and heart to seek the Lord your God. Get started building the Lord's sanctuary so that you may bring the ark of the Lord's covenant and the holy articles of God to the, to the temple that is to be built for the name of the Lord. Right. <clears throat> so now they're building God's temple, Solomon's temple, they called it, right? So, now we're going to read Psalm 30 and be done for today. <clears throat> hmm. Joy in the morning. Psalm 30. One of David's songs. I exalt you, Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not allowed my enemies to triumph over me. Lord my God, I cried to you for help and you healed me. Lord, you brought me up from show. You spared me from among those going down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor a lifetime. Weeping may stay overnight, but there is joy in the morning. <clears throat> when I was secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you showed your favor, you made me stand like a strong mountain. When you hid your face, I was terrified. Lord, I called you. I sought favor from my Lord. What gain is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your truth? Lord, listen and be gracious to me. Lord, be my helper. You turned my lament into dancing and removed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness so I can sing to you and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. So, there you have it. That's day 143. And well, that's going on. He just put Solomon in charge. It's going to get... Pretty good. What do they got us reading? Okay, more psalms tomorrow. Lots of psalms tomorrow. Okay. And then we're going back into Chronicles. And this this will probably be the um Yeah. The end of David and the beginning of Solomon's reign on what's today? Wednesday? On Friday. So that'll be kind of exciting. So there you have it. That's <coughs> Psalm 143, David had quite the life, huh? You know, I, I don't remember reading where David went crazy and went out into the fields and was eating grass like a cow for a couple of years, I think, and came back. I don't know if that's coming up or not, but I, I don't remember reading that. But I remember the story as a child. Hmm. I'll have to find that out. But that's it for today. Until tomorrow, we'll keep doing this. Catch up on any you may have missed. Do you want to say you got the whole Bible in a year? No. Until then, keep reading. See you tomorrow.